My name is Sascha Preibisch and I would like to explain how Pixie works, proof key for code exchange by OAuth public clients. This is more or less an extension to the OAuth authorization code flow. Please check out my authorization code flow video if you have no idea how that works. Um, this slide already includes a important term which is public clients. They are confidential and public clients in OAuth and Pixie addresses the issue that public clients don't have a client secret. And this causes public clients to be uh, vulnerable to certain attacks. So in this video, I'll explain how Pixie solves one of those. The problem is called authorization code interception attack, which means that a code may be used by a wrong application. On a high level, it looks like this. There's client A sending an authorization request to the authorization endpoint of the authorization server. This server issues an authorization code. The client uses that code to exchange it at the token endpoint for an access token. And now this access token is used to access protected resources. However, <clears throat> in this scenario, it's the wrong application that received the authorization code. And now this wrong application uh, may use this code to exchange it for a uh, access token at the token endpoint and now this client may use this access token. And what does it mean? It means this, that this access token can now be misused to retrieve protected resources and these protected resources could include private pictures or your money in the bank. <coughs> Now here's a little more detail on how this uh, attack works and I'm explaining it for mobile devices with mobile apps because it makes it easier to follow this, uh, this problem. Let's say there's a mobile device which has an operating system and there are several applications or apps installed and my app may be yours. Now what you would do if you had an app that uses an authorization code flow, you would register a custom URL scheme for this app, which could be me, my app, one.com. Unfortunately, this hacker app may register the same URL scheme, and the OS is not preventing any apps from doing that. Now, if you look at how the authorization server returns an authorization code, it's always sent back to the redirect URI. In this case, it's your USA URL scheme um, that was used. And this code is now received at this uh, custom URL and the operating system will launch any app that is registered using this scheme and it will launch these apps randomly. So the code may be sent to your app but maybe to the hacker app. You cannot prevent this. And now the hacker app owns this authorization code, may exchange it for an access token and use it. In order to fix this, Pixie was introduced and this is how it works. Your app needs to generate a so-called code verifier which is a string 43 to 128 characters and this code you have to remember as part of your session. Next step is to take this code verifier and generate a so-called code challenge. And the code challenge may be generated using SHA-256 or um, the code challenge may be set to the code verifier. And this would be called the plain method which is not recommended. Afterwards, the code challenge and the code challenge method will be included in the authorization code request. So, in addition to client ID, scope, response type, and redirect URI, which would be your custom URL, your app has to include the code challenge, which is the base64 URL encoded version of the code challenge, and the code challenge method, which would either be S256 or plain. After your app receives an authorization code, it will include the code verifier when it exchanges the code for an access token. And 
this will look like this. You will include the client ID, the redirect URI as before, the code that was received, but also the code verifier. And now the server has received this code verifier and will use it to verify that it can issue the access token to this client. If we go back to this picture, um, I try to explain a little more on this. <clears throat> so, um, in comparison to earlier, your app now generates this code verifier and it is only available to your app. In your authorization request, when you include the code challenge, the hackers app may also notice this value, but it doesn't add value for the hacker app because this is a public value anyways now. So you include the code challenge, you include the code challenge method, the uh, code is returned to the custom URL, the redirect URI, and the operating system will now launch either your app or the hacker app. And let's say your app gets launched, what you will do is you'll send the uh, code exchange request to the token endpoint. You'll include the code verifier plus other parameters as shown. The token endpoint will use the method that you have specified. It will take the code verifier and it will regenerate the code challenge that you have sent earlier. Now if, these, if this value matches, the server knows, okay, this is the correct client. Let's say the code has been sent to the hacker app. The hacker app wouldn't be able to send the code verifier. It would have to generate a random value and just try to, to use it, which will most likely fail. And therefore, it couldn't exchange the code for an access token. Now, the access token will not be issued. The request will fail. Uh, but mainly, your application is safe and the hacker app was not able to receive an access token. Here are typical uh, questions that I've heard. Why is Pixie for public clients only? Well, public clients do not have a client secret and therefore don't have a real way of authenticating themselves. The client ID is just an identifier. And with that, any app can impersonate a public client. Why is this for the code flow only? Well, in an implicit flow, Instead of an authorization code, the access token is received uh, via the uh, custom URL, the redirect URI. And therefore, the operating system would launch the hackers app, and in this case, the access token would, always be, or would already be given to that hacker app. There's nothing you can do to prevent uh, this access token being given to the wrong app. When to use Pixie? The recommendation is to use it with all clients that use an authorization code flow. If they're public or confidential, doesn't matter. Just simply always use it. And uh, the main goal for Pixie is it binds the uh, issued code to the client that initially asked for it. And with that, it prevents unauthorized usage of this uh, code. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment with questions that you may have, suggest identity topics that you would like to learn more about, and subscribe if you would like to be notified for future videos. Have a good day!